So I was browsing YouTube a while back, looking for info about gear that I'm interested in, and I came across a video by the channel Digifex Electronics called Roland Jupiter X. Pros and cons and cons and cons. And if I'm being honest, based on the commentary in that video, maybe a more appropriate title for the review would have been The Roland Jupiter X Sucks, because the gentleman doing the review didn't have a whole lot of good things to say about the synthesizer. Now before we get into it, let me be clear, this isn't the world's most perfect keyboard. No piece of gear is perfect. I've owned, I don't know, a dozen or so hardware synths over the years, many of them being a brand's flagship product at the time, and there are always shortcomings. But in the aforementioned video, there were a lot of things that were said about the Jupiter that I personally didn't really agree with. And I wanted to do a video of my own offering up some counterpoints to the things presented there. Because while I don't think that this keyboard is absolutely perfect, I do think that it's really damn good. So the sentiment that the Jupiter X and XM are somehow flawed or less than stellar hardware synths isn't an exclusive idea that I found in that review video that I previously mentioned. I've seen that discussion online plenty of times with plenty of people voicing negative opinions on this keyboard. But the number one most important thing about any instrument is how does it sound? So let's start there. How does this keyboard sound? Now, in my opinion, I think that it sounds great. And to help showcase that, I asked Robert St. John to help me illustrate the point and write a short demo track demonstrating what the Jupiter and the Zencore engine is capable of doing. So here's the clip of what he was able to come up with using only his Roland Jupiter XM. I'll have all applicable links to his channel and his website where you can find all sorts of information about how he put this track together and of course great tutorials about this keyboard. So check out the video description for that, but in the meantime, listen to this. In that clip, John used the iARP, the step sequencer, all five parts including percussion, and a bunch of neat tricks to put together a pretty amazing track. Now I've only scratched the surface on some of those more advanced features on my Jupiter X, and I knew he was the perfect person to ask to help me really showcase what the Jupiter Zencore engine was capable of. So a big thanks to him for helping me out. And again, to check out all of the uh, links and applicable information, check the description of this video, go check out his website, his YouTube channel, and learn a bunch of great tips and tricks and tutorials on how to use this synthesizer. Now back to the topic at hand, does the Jupiter X actually suck? 
No, I don't think so, not at all. Some of the negatives that Digifex mentioned in his video included statements like, the synth is just a VST in a box, and he calls it the same thing as VSTs found in the Roland cloud. He implies that those are somehow negatives. I've gotta be honest, I just don't get it. I mean, what digital or virtual analog synth isn't technically a VST in a box? And why is that a bad thing? I've owned things like the Axis Virus KB, the Korg MS-2000, the Roland JP-8000, and many others, and they were all freaking awesome. But they were all basically VSTs in a box, mostly at a time before VST was even a thing, mind you. But I digress. Sure, it's a digital synth, so yeah, it's software, just like a VST, but it's running on a different platform. Duh. That said, being able to sit down at the Jupiter X or my computer with Xenology and make patches and swap those patches between platforms is an awesome feature, giving me creative flexibility that I never had with any of those older synths that I just mentioned. Now he also mentions that Jupiter X is basically the same synth engine Roland has been using for the past 20 years, just renamed Zencore. And I have a hard time addressing this one because I don't like to talk out of my ass about things that I couldn't possibly know. Because hey, I'm not a Roland engineer, but I sort of doubt that he's one either. And I also sort of doubt that Roland has been reusing the same code and technology for the past 20 years without updating it or improving it. I, uh, yeah, I very seriously doubt that saying it's the same engine with a new name is a true statement. Now, perhaps one day I'll have the opportunity to talk with someone at Roland and get the scoop on how Zencore differs from prior generations digital synth engines, but in the meantime, I guess I'm gonna just safely assume that it's not simply just a renamed copy of an old technology because that sort of seems nonsensical. Now, I have found some flaws of my own with this keyboard. Like I said, it's not perfect, but none of those things were mentioned in Digifex's video for some reason, which and it makes me wonder if he even really tested the synth. The problems that I found were things like bugs in the software that I hope and expect will be fixed in a future firmware revision. But as I've said before, the most important thing is how does the synth sound? Well, here's one of my favorite patches that I think sounds pretty epic. <laughs> Now, another complaint from that video that I need to address is the assertion that the keybed is bad. At one point, he complains that the keyboard is, it's noisy and metallic sounding. Then he proceeds to slam on the keyboard to prove that point. Then in comparison, says that the keybed on his favorite synth, the DeepMind, is much better and he illustrates that point by ever so gently pressing down the keys on the Behringer. Now look, the DeepMind might have a great keybed, I've never played that one, but slamming on the keyboard to show how loud it is and then using kid gloves on the other is just sort of a face palm of a comparison. The truth is that the keybed on the Jupiter X is outstanding. It's as good, if not better, than the Access Virus that I had and the Korg Triton that I've owned in the past. There is one exception, that being that the aftertouch on the Roland is very, very stiff, but it's certainly not bad or noisy for a keybed. Lots of people, including the author of the video we're discussing, complained about the LCD display, and more specifically where it's placed, saying that it's hard to read. Now, in my opinion, it's really not hard to read at most angles. I'm not sure why this complaint gets mentioned. Is it less ideal than having it dead center of the keyboard? Sure, a little, but its placement doesn't preclude your ability to be able to read it. I think people are kind of grasping at straws if that's one of the reasons that they use to suggest that this is a bad keyboard. It's really barely an inconvenience. The Digifex video does mention a negative that I actually do agree with, and that's to do with the internal speakers. <laughs> Now his complaint isn't the same as mine, not exactly. He mentions that they lack bass and they sound tinny, and while, yeah, that's true, that's really not the problem. I mean, what did you expect them to sound like? They're tiny internal speakers. My issue is basically that I don't want internal speakers at all, and I'd rather cut the cost off the price and remove them altogether. 
If they did sound great, still get rid of them in my opinion. I don't care what the internal speakers sound like, I care about what the synth sounds like. Outputting audio the way it's intended. And if you check out this example of another one of my favorite presets, I think it sounds pretty amazing. Now towards the end of his video, he complains about the style, the aesthetic, and the design, and he makes a comparison to a classic and a modern Chevy Camaro, and I don't know, it was kind of a weird tangent that even as a fan of classic American muscle cars just seemed a bit silly to me. He did make a point about the complexity of the menu system and the integration of the front panel controls and the confusing workflow that wasn't totally off base. Yeah, it's a complicated synth with a deep learning curve, but that's not unique in that plenty of synths are complicated. Case in point, I have a Korg wave state that gives me a headache when I try to program patches. But like the Roland Jupiter X, it sounds outstanding and it most certainly doesn't suck. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did and you'd like to see more Music Gear content, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment and show your support. I have plenty of great ideas for gear review videos covering some of my favorite gear in synths and in guitars, but it's really only worth doing if people wanna see it, so let me know. Also, don't forget to check out the description with links to Robert St. John's channel and website. And again, a big thanks for helping me out with that awesome track that you put together on your Roland Jupiter XM, Robert. That was awesome. And with that said, I'll go ahead, sign off, and leave you with another one of my favorite presets on the Roland Jupiter X. Bye now.